Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video we're talking we're talking about fathers and sons. You know, like father like son. But not in a good way. We're heading on down to Kentucky in this one and taking a look at the case of Trey Zwicker and what really happened to him. Because bizarrely in this story you have two people both saying they are responsible for what happened. So you kind of don't know what to believe. And when looking at what surrounded what happened, you really don't know what happened, which is even stranger. This is a uh, tough one to wrap the L noodle around. Right, let's stop uh, kicking the tires. This case, it's a little confusing. It's quite frustrating, but you know what? We'll get through together. So in this whole case, you have three families, right? You have Gauker, Young, and Zwicker. So we'll start with those families, and how about in the year of 1996, the place, Louisville, Kentucky. The big boy in this story is Josh Gauker, and in 1996, he had a child with Angelina Young. The child would also be named Josh, but use his mother's name of Young. So first thing, we have uh, two main characters in this story, both named Josh. So that'll come up again and again. You know, I'm going to name Big Josh, Gauker, Little Josh, Young. So when I say Gauker, I mean the dad. When I say Young, I mean the youngin. So around this time of having his son in 1996, Gauker was also having an on-again, off-again relationship with a woman named Amanda Zwicker, who we'll get to in a bit. Now this uh, Gauker fellow, he more or less had a uh, revolving door in the jail. In 2001, he escaped from a Kentucky Department of Corrections site. Don't know what he did to get into it. In 2002, he would be back in again for theft, unlawful imprisonment, assault of an officer, and just, uh, just regular old assault too, sure you know yourself. This would continue for, well, charges like this throughout the 2000s. What a guy. And so, when Angelina Young died in 2010, Josh Young, the son, would be put into foster care, as his dad, Gauker, was in the slammer at the time. He got out, regained custody of uh, Young, who was 15 years old at the time. The foster family Josh Young was with while his dad was in prison, um, he actually seemed to get on really, really well with them. They seemed to have done a good job raising him until Gauker, with his uh, not great, you know, history, came back into his life. So, Gauker and Young, father and son, move in with Gauker's cousin Cassie. His, his cousin, who he may probably... It seems like he was riding her, basically. Yeah, his cousin. There really must be nothing to do in Kentucky. So, swiftly moving on. Now, around the time that Josh Young was born in 1996, Trey Zwicker was also born that same year. He was the son of Amanda Zwicker, Gauker's on and off again lover, and Terence Trey Zwicker. So Trey was also named after his dad, which is not confusing at all. But don't worry, because Terence, the dad, would exit the picture pretty soon when he married somebody else. Amanda Zwicker would then start dating Gauker, who was still living with his on-again, off-again lover of a cousin. It seems that they all actually knew each other from an early age. Amanda only lived a few doors down from Cassie. Amanda and Gauker would marry, and they got along relatively well. Trey Zwicker and Josh Young were both around the same age. Got along relatively well, for a bit. So even though Gauker and Amanda were married, raising, you know, their kids together, at Josh Young was 15, Trey Zwicker was 14, oh, Gauker was still off, porking his cousin. Trey, by the way, seemed to have escaped the influence of his uh, stepfather, unlike his stepbrother, Josh Young, who regularly, Gauker would regularly uh, give his own son, you know, they would smoke, smoke the reefer, and Gauker would tell his son all about, you know, his various escapades in and out of jail. Trey was close with his dad, who had married another woman. He was an electrician. If you get a flicker, call Zwicker. Trey enjoyed fishing, dirt bikes, he was on the honor roll in school. And now, in December 2010, when Josh Gauker was in his cousin Cassie's home, you don't want to know what they were doing, it seems like he accidentally butt-dialed uh, his wife, Amanda, who again just lived, you know, a few houses down the road. And Amanda could hear them talking about her, and basically kind of shit-talking her. Now, Amanda was pregnant at the time with Josh Gauker's baby. This would lead to Amanda having an abortion as 
you know, hearing her husband and his cousin talking about them and their marriage and their relationship. Well, that's that. And her having an abortion seems to have lit the powder keg of what would happen. On the early afternoon of the 11th of May, 2011, a teacher at Liberty High School in Louisville was taking the kids out for a bit of a wander. And while walking along a ditch at the edge of the school property, they saw a body lying there. It was 14-year-old Trey Zwicker. School children found the body of a teenage boy in a ditch yesterday afternoon. Today, friends and family are mourning and homicide detectives are working double time. And today we learned the body found behind Liberty High School is 14-year-old Trey Zwicker. He actually attended Seneca High School but lived nearby Liberty. It's a crime too difficult for family members to wrap their minds around. A 14-year-old found dead in a ditch. His son was a, was a person that liked the outdoors like him, his dad and they look forward to being together this summer. Unfortunately, that got cut short by you know, him losing his life. Trey was last seen Tuesday night. He didn't show up for school on Wednesday. His father told Christopher Tuex his son didn't have any known enemies and had no violent tendencies. According to the medical examiner, he had been beaten to death with a rod or a pipe and left in the ditch to die in the early morning hours of May 11th. No weapon was ever found. And so the investigation began. So the police immediately went to the family of Trey, his mother Amanda, his stepfather Josh Gauker, and his stepbrother Josh Young. Amanda said the last time she saw Trey was the night before, on the 10th of May at about 10 p.m. She said that after Gauker spent the night with her, I guess his cousin was busy, they knocked boots and then went to the store and bought cigarettes. This was confirmed by CCTV family and friends prepare for his funeral, the questions surrounding his death are continuing to mount. His body was found Wednesday in a ditch near Liberty High School by some students. The school is in the same neighborhood where Zwicker's mother lives. Police suspect foul play, but have not made public any information about a potential motive, and they've not labeled anyone a suspect or person of interest. But still, there remained questions about one of the Joshes being involved with what happened to Trey. This was then exacerbated by the fact that soon after uh, Trey's funeral, Josh Gauker took his son, left town, Gauker skipped a probation appointment, they just disappeared, not looking too good, and Amanda at the same time filed a protective order against Josh. She had just spent the night with uh, Gauker, the night her son was killed, and so if she had her suspicions about him, well, an Amber Alert was issued for Josh Young, as he was 15 years old at the time and seems to, I don't know, he was taken, abducted by his father. Nobody really knew what had happened. And then things become even more complicated. See, Cassie, the cousin, told the authorities that Josh Young had confessed to her, before he skipped town with his dad, that he'd killed Trey Zwicker. She said that he came over to her house that night after he had murdered him to, to wash up, to wash away blood and stuff. So it was a dad and son team on the run. And who knows what was actually the story? Yeah, this one is sort of batshit. That snowball will continue to grow. Louisville father and son are both in an Alabama jail arrested on gun charges following an Amber Alert for the boy last night. 15 year old Joshua Young had been missing since Tuesday. That's right, Karen. There are still a lot of questions this afternoon really surrounding the entire case. Like why were the two in Alabama? Why were they carrying guns? And maybe most importantly, who killed 14 year old Trey Wicker? On June 23rd, 2011, about a month after the murder, they were both finally found and arrested in Alabama. Found because they were, um, you know, committing more crimes. See, Gauker allegedly held a woman at gunpoint and forced her to drive them away, eventually hoping to flee the country. However, she escaped at one point and told the cops. Josh Young was extradited back to Kentucky and charged with murder, and his dad was charged with kidnapping and violating his parole. And I'm not gonna get into detail on who we spoke with and who we didn't. Uh, mainly for the purposes of what little we can still do to protect this juvenile's identity. I know there's quite a bit of information out there, but I don't want to add to that any more than it's already been out. However, the charges against Gauker for, you know, the kidnapping, uh, they didn't really stick because it, it turned out that Josh Gauker and the woman he had, you know, kidnapped, 
they had a bit of a history. So, hope it wasn't his cousin. Josh Young, he was in the shit though, as police were full sure he had murdered his stepbrother. So we kind of need to get, get the truth. And there's a lot of other things I want to talk to you about. So let's kind of work through this part at first. Tell me the truth about that night. We were on the back porch. It was me, him, Dad and Amanda were... Dad and Amanda stayed on that porch the whole night, evidently, because we were on the back porch and he told me he was going to take a shower and calm down for the night. So I went to Cassie's. I planned on... I, I didn't know if I was going to sleep down there or sleep down at Amanda's, but I got comfortable down at Cassie's. Ended up watching a movie and falling asleep down there. And I don't want you to get jammed up in this murder case at all. I don't okay. to do with it. Okay. Why would some of your friends, male or female, come to me and say that you and your dad were talking about how you all would kill people before Trey was murdered, and that Trey was murdered in a similar fashion to how you described how you and your dad would do it? no idea. So why would they lie about that? Grudges? I don't know. I, I get along with everybody. So if I had a grudge with... So nobody would really have a reason to lie. I never once talked about killing anybody. And I never heard my dad talking about killing anybody. And my dad liked Trey and so did I. Okay. Let's talk about the ride down. Why would you, why did you go to Alabama? What was the reason to take Alabama? We were just passing through Alabama. Like what made you all mean even leave? The girl that was with you, who's who she? Uh, just a friend. Had you met her before? Huh? Had yeah. you met her before? Yeah, no. I mean, because obviously your dad is on parole, so he's not allowed to even leave this county. I mean, your life was pretty good while your dad was in prison. You got in that. You had a much better situation. I mean, I love my dad more than anybody in this world, and I'd rather be with him than anybody in this world. So my life was much better with my dad. So your life was better getting arrested in Alabama? Being with my dad, it's all worth it. I mean, you want you want to find the person responsible for this, right? Well, of course. What kind of question is that? Yeah, I do. It's well, the question I'm asking. That's the kind as of much of anybody else, yes. So your honesty is important in this investigation? I understand that, and I've told you. I have nothing to do with it, neither does my dad. That's why are you harassing us and the close family instead of really trying to figure it out? He's innocent and so am I. There's no reason either one of us should be going to prison. So at this stage, you have the unsolved murder of Trey Zwicker, a father and son team who went on the run, or, or rather actually what they said was they went on vacation to Alabama. Who goes on vacation to Alabama? And then you have the father's lover, his cousin saying that the son confessed to the crime. After Gauker was released in Alabama, the kidnapping charge fell apart, he eventually made his way back to Kentucky, where he was arrested again for skipping probation. When he was arrested, it seems he may have initially confessed that his son murdered Trey Zwicker. Yeah, Trey what time it was, Trey pulled his phone out of his pocket, and then when he put the phone back in there, he hit Trey. Well, he said he hit him like 15 times. Although, even though the authorities had Josh Young in their sights, the why, the motive, was never kind of found. At least not for Josh Young, because Josh Gauker changed his mind and said that he had killed Trey himself and that his son had nothing to do with it at all. The motive, well, he gave a few. On the night Trey Zwicker was killed, maybe he stole uh, Josh Gauker's food. Or no, maybe it was, maybe it was weed he stole. Or maybe it was because he learned that his wife, Amanda, had an abortion and he wanted to, quote, get even with her. Not only that, he also said he had planned on killing Amanda too. So now they have a 15-year-old Josh Young who they charged with murder and a 31-year-old Josh Gauker who's confessing to it. Cassie Gauker still said that the younger Josh, Young, had gone to her house that night and confessed he had done it, and that he had beaten Trey with a baseball bat, while Josh the Older was saying he had done it with a pipe. In 2012, Josh Gauker was charged with Trey's murder, and Josh Young's charges were downgraded to conspiracy to commit murder, as allegedly, he knew his father was going to kill Trey's wicker. In the summer of 2013, 33-year-old Josh Gauker was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. He will be eligible for parole 
in 2031. That judge says he wished he could have imposed an even harsher punishment. A few weeks ago, 33-year-old Josh Gawker admitted beating Trey Swicker to death with a pipe. Until then, he pointed the finger at his son. Gawker is a man with a violent past, and Swicker's relatives urged the judge to show no mercy. But he admitted it to the court. He's taken responsibility for it, and he should be, um, that should be mitigating evidence that the court should consider when determining a punishment. As Galker's attorney attempted to make his case for leniency, Galker's son Josh sat at the table behind him. He's also charged with Trace Wicker's May 2011 killing. Galker pleaded guilty a few weeks ago. He told the court he acted alone. The hardest thing I ever had to do was bury my 14 year old son. No parent should ever have to feel that pain. The second hardest thing I ever had to do was tell my daughter, then eight years old, that her brother, her best friend, her playmate was never coming home again. And I hope Josh burns the pits of hell. God gets the final judgment. It just amazes me that you sit there with a smirk on your face and you smile through this whole process, knowing the pain that you've caused all these people. I hope I never set eyes on you again. Not long after his dad was sent away, a 17-year-old Josh Young had his turn on trial. At his trial, Josh Gowker testified that he and he alone committed the murder of Trey Zwicker. And what are you serving? Life. For what? Killing Trey. You, did you enter into a guilty plea or did a jury find you guilty? I just pled guilty. Can you tell the jury what you told the judge when you pled guilty? What the facts were? That I killed him for stealing from me and, and for, for keeping on stealing shit, you know? But that wasn't really the real. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it was at the, It just felt right at the time. But that wasn't why I did it. I mean, it's not like uh, I wanted Trey to die, or if I could do it over, I'd kill him again. None of that. You know, it. I mean, his mother killed a couple of mine, and it just felt right. I mean. I know it sounds monstrous and all that shit, but it's not. If we was in the Old Testament, it'd be the same thing. I don't know if he came downstairs or came in from the back porch or whatever, where he came from. I don't know. I know what you're doing. You're trying to make microscopic little holes in the shit that I didn't even give a fuck about two years ago. So how can I tell you the exact thing now when I really didn't give a fuck then? If you're telling the truth, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm to a me. fucking... I, yeah, but goddamn, I've lied this whole fucking time, except for since arraignment. Since arraignment court, I've told you I've done it. I admitted everything I've done. I've been sentenced for it. Life in prison. Yet here I am, going over this same fucking story. They had nothing really pinning Josh Young, you know, uh, to the murder, other than uh, Cousin Cassie saying he had, you know, allegedly confessed. Although maybe she was just saying that she wanted her lover, cousin, out of prison. No murder weapon was ever found, so... You know, while one group was saying it was with a baseball bat, the man who was confessing to it said it was a pipe, and the medical examiner couldn't say which. After a 10-day trial, Josh Young was found not guilty. Verdict form number one, murder. We, the jury, find the defendant Joshua Young not guilty under instruction number one. Verdict form number two, tampering with physical evidence. We, the jury, find the defendant Joshua Young not guilty under instruction number two. With late breaking details on something that could have changed the outcome in this case. Aaron, we've learned that there was a last minute plea deal offered. Yeah, Vicki, Trey Zwicker's family had waited for this day in court, saying that they believed in the justice system. That's why they say they denied a request for a plea deal made just last night by Josh Young. Lita Zwicker, that's Trey Zwicker's stepmom, saying that, telling me by phone that, quote, that's not something that an innocent person would ask for. Trey Zwicker's father and family flooded with emotion after the jury's verdict is read in court. After that, Josh Young was a free man. He was placed back into that foster family who, who looked after him, you know, so well. And he promptly ran away. In 2014, he was arrested after assaulting the boyfriend of Cassie Gowker. Apparently, he had said some things during the trial. And Josh Young was also arrested for assaulting his girlfriend. But now, get this... 
Josh Gauker, who was put away for life, was in prison, he was now saying that he wanted to retract his guilty plea, that he was just covering for his son, that he was just, uh, you know, uh, trying to take the fall for him, as he didn't want his young son, who was, you know, 15 years old at the time, sent away for life. Josh Gauker wants his guilty plea in the murder of his 14-year-old stepson set aside. In July, Gauker was given a life sentence. Seven months later, Gauker filed a motion stating he lied to save his son, Josh Young. My attorney, uh, Mark Hall, you know, uh, knew what I was doing, knew that I was going to come in here and lie and take the blame for my son and not only allowed me to do it, but coached me along the way. Even in here, which we're about to watch, I guess, he told me before we walked in here to keep my answers short. I committed perjury several times. I'm you know, it's kind of interesting that I asked you the question during the plea hearing that was it your plan to, at a later date, try and set aside your guilty plea? Remember that? Yes, sir, and that wasn't a lie. I mean, I've, I've admitted I've lied throughout the whole thing, but I thought even though at that moment Josh was still tried, uh, charged with this, that as soon as that went everywhere, that I said I did it, you accepted my guilty plea, I thought they would dismiss it. And then I would... That I was all be part able, of your master plan. Well, it? I mean, I had to do what I, I, whatever I could, man, to save my son. He's 14, 15 years old, facing life in prison. He asked the court to set aside his guilty plea. The court denied. I mean, it may as well have uh, been granted, though, because in the years following Josh Young, uh, his son, who was spared prison, was more or less in, out of, in and out of jail constantly, just like his dad. First, it was the assault charges. Then he was in possession of a stolen vehicle. Then he was arrested for drugs possession, weed and meth. He was charged with trafficking, possession, carrying a concealed weapon, and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. He was a felon from the assault charge. For that, he was sentenced to 37 months in prison. Now, since Josh Young was acquitted, not guilty, Trey Zwicker's parents, Terence and Amanda, have basically been furious. They were sure, they are sure, that Josh Young was involved in the murder of Trey. Maybe he didn't kill him, but he was definitely there. In fact, they believe it was, they were in cahoots. They both killed Trey Zwicker, father and son. Gruesome twosome. No one really knows. Josh Gauker confessed and then said, I just confessed to save my son. I actually, I actually kind of want to get out of jail now, guys, if you don't mind. So was Josh Young then the real killer? Well, maybe because in 2019, Josh Young wrote a letter from prison. Hello, my name is Joshua Young. I don't know why that's in quotation marks. On May 10th, 2011, I murdered Trey Zwicker. I murdered him alone. It was not planned, it was not a plot, and there was nobody else involved in any kind of way. I acted alone, and by my father's lies and him admitting to a murder he had no involvement in, I was spared a life. He said that on the night of May 10th, 2011, he met Trey, and they smoked weed behind the school. And then he just... randomly beat him to death with a baseball bat he had brought to smash windows. He lost count of how many times he hit him with the bat. But he said that Trey started shaking and making all kinds of weird little noises, so he kept hitting him to make the sounds stop. After he killed Trey, Young said he went to his cousin's house, Cassie, with the bloody baseball bat and wearing bloody clothes. He said there was no water at his cousin's house at the time, so he woke her up and told her to take him to dispose of the evidence. Why did you do it? For one, I just didn't like him. He had a big mouth with no actions to back it up, but for two, you know, he told on me one night when we got pulled over by the police, I'm home from a house party. And I had some weed on, I had some weed on me and he, he told on me about that, something petty. Did your dad tell you or prompt you or instruct you to kill Trey? Absolutely not. If anything, he would have instructed me to never do that. So maybe Cassie was telling the truth that he actually had gone to her house that night and confessed. Josh Young is still in prison 
currently. I mean, he's in prison for all those other charges he had committed since being acquitted. Um, he can't be charged with the, or can't be tried again for the murder of Trey's Wicker, double jeopardy. He was already tried for that, but um, some have said he can be tried again. It depends on what, you know, is brought against him. So it's possible, maybe, Josh Young could go on trial again for the murder of Trey's Wicker, but I don't know what to make of this case at all. I mean, do you? Were you a good father? Probably not by society standards. I mean, to him, I'm probably father of the year, <laughs> you know, but to, to the normal people, probably not. Some would argue and say that taking the fall for your son was probably the only decent thing you've done with your life. It's the biggest, and I, mean, I can't disagree with that. Can't disagree with that. It's, it's the biggest. It's the. Um, it probably is the big. It is by far the mo the big, most decent, realest thing I've ever done. It's such a twisted case. It's hard to know what's true. The only thing we do know is that the life of Trey's Wicker ended very tragically. Maybe all those crimes Josh Young committed when he was acquitted, he couldn't get his life together. A life he even said was spared. Maybe he couldn't get his shit together because of the guilt of murdering a 14-year-old, his 14-year-old stepbrother. Who really knows what went on between Josh Young and Josh Gauker, father and son? I mean, Josh Young, is he the real killer? Did Josh Gauker take the hit to try and save his son? Or is Josh Gauker just trying to recant his guilty plea because he just wants to get out of prison and he knows his son can't be tried again, maybe because of double jeopardy laws or whatever. Who knows? And finally, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.